Hi, fifth grade mathematicians. This is going to be one of your last slip lessons for the whole year as the year is winding down. So let's make sure we're paying close attention because this is an important skill you need to know to be a successful adult. <coughs> Excuse me. So there's two ways you can do it. You can use a clock and look at a clock to, to solve this, and you could also do it mathematically, and eventually you'll do it in your head. So what I want to know is what time is it when I start? So here's the problem. Monica spends two and a half hours working on her computer. If she started at 10.30 a.m., what time did she stop? Now, we want to keep in mind that we have 12 at night, or midnight is 12 a.m., and that's going to go all the way till 11.59 a.m., right around lunchtime. And at 12 noon, that's when it turns to 12 p.m. and goes all the way till 11.59 at night. And then we'll have a brand new day. So we know that... This is how to do it written. We know it starts at 10.30, and she's going two and a half hours. Two and a half hours is two hours and a half is 30 minutes, right? When we look at a clock, we wanna, we can break it in half, and that half here would be 30 minutes. So I have 10.30 plus two and a half. I'm gonna add them together, because I wanna figure out what time this ends. So, 0 plus 0 is 0. Uh-oh, 3 plus 3 is 6, 2, and 1. Now, you should be saying to yourself, Hello, Mrs. Whirl. The 60 does not look right. That is absolutely right. 60 minutes is equal to 1 hour. Please excuse my awful handwriting there. So, we have 12 noon plus 1 hour is 1 hour. P M. 1 o'clock p.m. So the answer to my question is, what time did she stop? She stopped at 1 o'clock p.m. Now you should look back at what you had here and know that 1260 is not the way to say something. Also, you should also think it's not 1 in the morning that she stopped because it's only 2 hours that she has gone by. So it would then be turning to p.m. Now I'm going to show you how to do it with a clock. Please excuse my setup here with my Judy clock, but I have the clock at 10.30, and I know I have to go two and a half hours. So I suggest doing the half hour first. It makes it a lot easier. So I'm going to go half hour. So a half hour is 30 minutes, so that means I'm going to turn my clock to the next 30-minute mark. So now we are at 11 o'clock. Of course, my hour hand didn't go like it should. There we go. So we have 11 o'clock. That's only half hour. So now I have to go two more hours. So one hour and two hours. And look, I got the same exact answer I had done with the computation, but I did it on the clock. So you can have a clock available to you to use. You can also, I suggest, look at the actual clock and just do it in your head. That works as well. So what if you have a problem when you have the start time and you know that it's two hours and 20 minutes later? Again, you want to set it up like a math problem, but you always want to remember that the hours and, or the minutes, there's only 60 minutes in an hour, so you're going to have to borrow a little bit different. So this one we're going to add. So 5 plus 0 is 5, 1 plus 3, or 1 plus 2 is 3, sorry about that, and 7 plus 2 is 9. So this one, 9.35 makes complete sense, and it's going to be still in the a.m., so we're not switching between hours. For this one, we have a start time of 7.15 p.m., and we're going to go 2 hours and 20 minutes. So again, I'm going to do the 20 minutes first. So 5, 10, 15, 20, so that would be 7.35, and then I'm going to go 2 more hours. So one hour and two hours. So that leaves me at 9.35. So two hours and 20 minutes after 7.15 would be 9.35. So here we have one where we don't know the start time, but we do know the end time. So when we do know that, we're going to do the direct opposite of what we did before. We would add to find out the end time before. But since we know the end time, we're going to subtract. Now that can cause some headaches at times, but this one works out pretty well. Look at this. I'm going to subtract the 5 hours and 50 minutes. So 55 minutes minus 50 minutes is 5 minutes. And then 7 minus 5 
is 2. So our time is 2.05 p.m. So again, when we know the end time, we want to subtract instead of before when we knew the start time, then we needed to add. Here's one that's a little bit different. This one, there's no start time given, and it says there's been five hours and 50 minutes that have elapsed, and the end time is 7.55 p.m. So I have 7.55. So now we have to think in a different way. We have to go backwards. So we have to go back five hours and 50 minutes. So you'll see me move the clock the opposite way. So 55 minutes, I'm gonna go 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50. So there's my 50, so that's seven, 705. But then it has five hours. So I'm gonna take it five hours. One, two, three, four, Five. So that means it is, the hour hand went a little bit too far there, but it is 2.05. 2.05. Now five hours, it would keep it still in the same um, part, part of the day. So we started off with p.m., so then it's 2.05 p.m. So what if we don't know how much time has gone by? We know the start time, we know the end time. Well, that means we have to do a subtraction problem. We know the, the end is 10.05 and we're going to subtract the start of 30. Now here I'm so glad they came up with this one because can I do 5 minutes minus 30 minutes? I can't so I have to borrow an hour and when I borrow an hour how many minutes do I get? Well yes I'm going to get 60. So 60 minutes, I'm going to do the adding up here, it should be pretty easy. 60 minutes plus the 5 we already have equals 65 minutes. So now I borrowed that hour. I can subtract that. 5 minus 0 is 5. 6 minus 3 is 3. And then I have 9 minus 6 is 3. So my end time would be 3 hours or my, I already know my end time. I'm sorry, I misspoke. How much time has gone past? 3 hours and 35 minutes. So I interpret what I get here and turn that into hours and minutes to see how much time has passed. So again, I added 60 minutes when I didn't have enough. I can't just add 10. That's not the way time works. Time works with 60 minute interval, in, uh, increments of 60, which equal the hour. So you want to add 60 when you're borrowing. Here's still another way that you might see it. So we have the time as 6.30 p.m. And I want to know how much time goes by when I get to 10.05 a.m. So 10.05 is what we're shooting for. So we have to now count how much time has gone by. So let's count it. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35 minutes. Okay, that puts me at, oh, it didn't go all the way, 7.05 but then I need to get to 10.05. So how many hours is it from 7.05 to 10.05? Well, let's see. One hour will take it to 8.05. Two hours will take it to 9.05. And three hours will take it to 10.05. So we went three hours and 35 minutes to get to 10.05. Now there are some questions that can arise. For example, what if it's 11.30 a.m. and then two hours and 40 minutes go by? Well, we're gonna add it just like we did before, but this one is gonna present some issues. Now, when I add it, I get 13.70. That is not a time that I'm familiar with. Now this could be called military time. Military, go, instead of using resetting the 12, they keep going on to 13, 14, and so forth. You might have heard that in a movie or someone talking. But we're going to convert it to the average civilian time. So first of all, 70 minutes, that is equal. We're going to take 60 minutes out of there because those 60 minutes, they're going to be a new hour. So I'm going to add that. So that's going to be 14 hours and 10 minutes. Okay, so then when I think about 14 that is military time, so in order to get the civilian time, what you're going to do with 14 is subtract 12. And then we're going to get our 
our correct time. So our correct time will be 2 hour 2.10, and it's not going to be a.m. because it crossed over into the afternoon. So 2.10 p.m. We're going to practice these in class for sure if you had trouble, but if this didn't make sense, maybe you want to re-watch this little part here. We could also have it happen like this, where we do not know the start time. It's not given to us, and when that happens, we need to think in the opposite way. So instead of adding, we're going to subtract, because we know the end time. The end time is 3.05 p.m., and the amount of time that has gone by, uh-oh, 6 hours and 10 minutes. Okay, I see a few problems. First problem is I cannot subtract 5 from 10. The next problem is I cannot do 3 minus 6, so we got to think about that military time again. Okay, military time, we have to add 12 to the 3 to get what time that military time is. Remember that, 12. So 12 plus 3 is 15. So 3.05 p.m., if I was in the military, I would say 15.05 or 1,500 hours and 5 minutes. So that's a 15 there, okay? Now I can start doing my problem a little bit better. I cannot do 5 minutes minus 10 minutes, so I'm going to have to borrow. So now my hour is turning into 14, and I'm going to add 60 minutes to this. So 65 instead of oh, oh 05, it's 65. And then when I subtract it, I get 55. Okay. Now 14 minus 6 is 8. So now here's my time. That makes sense to me. 8.55, is it p.m. or a.m.? Let's think about that. If it was p.m. before and six hours before that, that would have been a.m. So you want to also think, does this make sense? So let's think about it. This started at 8.55 a.m., six hours had gone by, and then it was 3.05 p.m. That makes sense to me.